Welcome to the second hand. My name is Kachiri. And I am so thankful to my commenters. I absolutely do read all the comments. And if it wasn't for some of you, I could have possibly put myself in danger. I always knew that some old watches had radium on their dials. Did I know the extent of it? No. I got a Geiger counter because I had a lot of people telling me to be careful with old watches because that's kind of what I like the most. It's what got me into wanting to start mechanical watch repair. I promptly then scared myself. I had to do a lot of research. First off, I know that there are lots of people that work on old watches and are aware of the risks of radium and they're equipped to work on them and they understand them and they do it safely. I do this at my kitchen table. So I don't really feel safe working on radium watches. Um, a lot of people in my comments have told me that they're just starting out with watch repair. And I know that the most common thing to do is find an old watch and take it apart and try and work on it. I have a whole tub here of watches that I was hoping to get to at some point. Did I take my Geiger counter to every single one of them? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. And then I got pretty scared because some of these I don't ever want to open up. Some of them I might, when I have a better understanding of it and I'm more equipped for it. And I wanted to show you some of these watches and how thankful I am to these people in my comments that warned me. Let's start off with the lower one, shall we? Here's my little Geiger counter. I'm going to go and turn it on. I did get one of the more expensive ones. This one was like $100 off of eBay. I wanted to make sure that I was getting a good one because I have a lot of watches. Okay. Um, so I've got it set on USB and let's see here. Um, let's just go and put it up to this beautiful old Genova 21 jewels. Let's put it up to there and just kind of see what happens. You have to set it here for a while for watches that aren't quite as um, radioactive. And you will see what happens with the ones that are. To give everyone um, kind of an idea that might not know about this, typical background USV is up to 0.30 for the household. My house seems to sit somewhere between like 6 and 16, depending on where I'm at in it in the house. I also collect uranium glass. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Apparently, I just like radioactive things. This one is only slightly radioactive. It might be tritium. Let me just show you one of my scary watches. I have two of them in particular that are pretty scary. Okay, we have got a Wyco Flex. And this one, you can kind of see, doesn't look like it really has that much radium in it, right? Well, here we go. Is that sound not scaring anyone else? And yet it continues to rise. It just keeps going. Shh. Okay, I'm just gonna turn that off for a second. I have put some of these into little bags because um, some of their crystals are cracked or missing crowns. Yes, I am just realizing the danger of these. But some of these, I'm not planning on keeping. I'm passing them along to people who want to work on them. So let me just show you another one that I think is particularly scary. 
Okay. This one is a little marathon. And I was excited for this watch because I think it is beautiful. Have I hit it with my torch yet? Look at how that beauty glows. It is missing its crown. And you put it right up here and this thing freaks out. Does that not elevate anyone's heart rate hearing that? It keeps going. Okay. Almost to seven. I need to calm my own heartbeat for a moment. I guess the point to this video is you might not know what you have as far as radioactive watches, but if you have radioactive watches and they're not sealed completely, or if you're planning on getting into this hobby and you, like me, love vintage watches, I highly encourage you to get a Geiger counter and test your watches before you open them up and start thinking about working on them because it's kind of scary. And it has definitely made me rethink working on these kinds of watches. I don't know. I, for one, don't even want these watches in my house anymore. But I thought it was an important to thank people for warning me about it. And I wanted to warn others about radioactive watches. In truth, a lot of these watches, if sealed properly, um, it is completely safe for you to wear them. As long as they have been taken care of, they're sealed, they're okay. If you're working on them, if you're doing it safely, you're okay. But if you're not, then, you know, Brainium's not good for you. But yeah, um, I've got a bunch of watches in here, most of my old ones. Here's another one that I thought that was really, really cool. Uh, Illuminox. And as you can see right here, it's sitting next to the Geiger counter, not even that close, and it's not picking up any reading. So does it have to be close? in order for the Geiger counter to pick it up. Yes, absolutely it does. Because you get a little bit closer and then it really starts picking it up. Okay. So yes, I'm not going to be working on as many vintage watches as I hope. There are definitely plenty out there that I can work on, but now that I know the dangers of radium dialed watches. I can take precautions in the future and not work on them. And I hope that this video really helped some other people who want to get into the hobby to be more safe while doing it. But look at that. It's just sitting there next to these radium filled watches and it's not picking up anything. So you do have to be relatively close to any of these. I mean, that's a radium filled box right there. Oh, here's one that was in my last video. Um, this Rodania that I was really excited to work on. And um, I'll just go and put it up here. It is missing a crown and it does have, like you shine on it and you can very, very lightly see at the edge of some of the indices, there's a faint glow. It's just, a little bit above normal background radiation. So something like this is radioactive, but it's on a much lower, lower scale. And this might be something that I would be more comfortable getting into in the future. So yeah, something like this and not something that's frantically beeping at you, telling you you're in danger. I don't, I don't care who you are. That sound is scary. <laughs> I'm working on quite a few different movements right now. Um, it's taking me a lot of time because I don't have a lot of time to put towards this hobby. Both the tinkering and 
the videoing and the editing takes a lot of time. So I have multiple projects that I have going on and I hope to be getting a video up pretty soon about more mechanical watch repair. And it's so exciting. I appreciate everyone for following me along on my journey with all things watches and watch repair and watch talk because it's a lot of fun for me. I do read all the comments and I appreciate everyone's opinions, everyone's advice, and everyone's insight. And I have taken so much of that into account, as you can see with my radium stuff here and my got your counter and, you know, knowledge is power. And I, went, I am powerfully going to go into the future not working on dangerous watches. <laughs> powerfully. <laughs> powerfully. Because I have the knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Gifted to me by my commenters. <laughs> I do not want them in my house. <laughs> Maybe I'm a little bit more scared of them than I need to be, but when you didn't realize something was dangerous and you've been handling them, and then you realize that they're very dangerous, you tend to get a little bit more scared than you would have going into it, already knowing. So hopefully I can help some of you new newcomers to the hobby in the future before you get, you know, started. Know what you're doing, unlike me. I swear, I just like, I like all things radioactive, apparently. <laughs> what? I guess we're done for now, and I'll see you in the future. <laughs>